G'day everyone, Uncle Jojo, great to see you all again. Today we're on the green build and we're on the boundary line and retaining wall side. So we're going to talk over two things here, one's the boundary line and the other is the retaining wall. Now a retaining wall is a wall that's in place to hold in, in a rigid sense, uh, mass or weight on both sides. So on one side soil and one side water or in this sense we've got soil at a certain height and we've dug it out and we've got concrete on the other side. So we've got about a meter that we've got to retain the soil on the side and not let it cave in. We did talk about in the excavation videos about pressure of soil and when we're doing our excavations if that soil slips and falls you can have sometimes one to three tons worth of pressure falling on top of you. So when we're doing a retaining wall such as this, we need to make sure that we take into consideration the amount of weight and pressure that's coming across. Now this area here where we've done our site cut is now become the lowest point of discharge for any water that runs down. We've got a hill over in this direction, so the northwest. Now all water that comes from that direction is going to come down to this area here. So we've got drainage that goes all the way around. The other thing that we need to make sure is that this wall can suit the pressure of not just soil but also that water and over time that, water, that soil pressure pushing against this wall. So this wall here is going to be designed in such a way where it's going to be thick enough and core filled so it has the strength to hold together at the same time take any pressure and not bow and warp. We've all probably seen brick walls especially in the old buildings where they've all concaved in where they're against soil and that's because the soil over time will shift and move and end up popping that wall out. So here you'll see so here you'll see that we've got two lines. We've got one line of brick just here and another line of brick just here. And then we've got this hole in the center. So this hole in the center, wherever you can see these pink dots, they're gonna be Rio bar that are drilled in and chem set it into the concrete slab. And then this area here is gonna be core filled. So then what ends up happening is this wall then becomes 280 mil wide and everything in between that is gonna be solid filled as we build our walls up. That makes sure that the whole unit is one unit and that any pressure on the outside will be taken up in the rigidity of the in the rigidity of the entire wall. The other thing that we need to make sure that we do here, number one, is that we're on the boundary. We don't want to be over the boundary. And that was the importance of doing our site layouts and set outs at the very beginning. We need to get those spot on. If you had a looked at my earlier videos, you'd see the video on the the land surveyor that came out and they gave us some pins and some points so what we've done is taken all of our measurements from our pins and our points and got all of our lines now we've got this wall in place we're building it up we need to make sure that we're on or back from the boundary we don't want to be over it there is in some places a leeway where you've got something like uh, 25 millimeters leeway back and forward for your boundary wall we're not going to do that we're going to take a hit to win the war we're going to bring our wall in and make sure that we're inside that boundary line and we don't go over it when we're building our retaining wall on the boundary what we also want to do is make sure that no moisture comes through so what you can do is tar paint or rubber membrane the entire wall then what we'll also do after giving it three or four coats is run a plastic sheet all the way down so that no moisture can come through that and then I'll also put damp course throughout the entire wall to stop any moisture or restrict the amount of moisture as best we can from coming through this wall. We're not going to be able to get to it later, so we need to make sure we do it now. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to put down a solid sand base along here. Just have a look. You can see that we've put down this solid sand base all the way through and it goes all the way along and that's fairly flat. We'll make sure it is flat completely and then what we're going to do after that, we'll make sure that that's fairly flat all the way consistently and then we'll pour some cement powder over it, harden it up and then we will put our Aggie drain on the top of that and it's going to be a rigid Aggie drain, not a soft one with a sock around it, run that all the way through. We'll have a pit at one end, a pit at the other. So any rain that does come in or water that does come in, that'll either go both ways and then we can get that water out of there making sure that no water sits here and we don't undermine any of the slab with that uh, water and then eventually erode away that slab and weaken the edge beams or anything like that. Although if you look at the amount of concrete we put into this baby, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. If you've got any questions or queries about retaining walls or boundary walls, flick them over. I'll answer them for you best I can whenever I can. Thanks for watching and like always,
stay unreal, banana peel, and I'll see you in the soup. <laughs>